All right, let's get into every button that's inside the cabinet on a BMW and what all of those buttons do. Now I do have an X7, so I'm gonna have a few buttons that aren't applicable to other models like this one right here, but I'm gonna do my best to go through everything that should be on every single BMW car, and then I'll come back and I'll touch on the X7 exclusive button. So starting at the door panel, this is going to be your central door lock. So that's unlocking and locking the vehicle. There's also another one of those on the passenger side. A lot of these buttons are gonna be duplicated on the passenger side. In front of that is your seat set savings. So in order to activate that, you put the seat into your desired position, you would hit set, and then you would hit the number that you want it to be on. So therefore, this seat position is now set as one. Now on some vehicles, you will find L2, mainly X fives and up. L2 basically means when you go to adjust your seat, it's adjusting the passenger seat instead. Now coming down, you have the trunk release. Pressing down once will pop open the trunk. See the trunk open. And then if you press and hold the toggle back up, it will actually close the tailgate. Just like that. Coming down below, we have our mirror adjustment. So as this toggle is pushed to the left, we will be able to adjust our mirrors. We push it to the right, we will adjust our passenger mirrors. Now, one thing that this vehicle does is when you go into reverse, the passenger mirror will tilt down. But if you have this engaged to the right like this, that feature will not activate. Then this is our manual pull-in for our mirrors. It can be done automatically when you lock the vehicle, or you can do it manually. And then down below, we have our window controls. They're automatic one touch pressing down and coming up. Farther down, you will get to the rear child seat safety on the window. So when this light is engaged, the back seat window switches will not activate. Now coming in a little farther in, we have some light buttons right here. Most of the time you'll find lights are on automatic. Maybe you want to turn the lights off. Maybe you want to make sure the lights are on. Maybe you want to make sure the parking lights are on. Maybe you want the fog lights to be on. So all those are your light settings. And then right here, you have your dimming feature for your interior. Me personally, I find with the iDrive 7, the two main screens that get a little bright, this will dim them down so it won't be giving so much light into your face. Now we move closer to the steering wheel. First one on the X5 and above, you'll have your steering wheel position. So bring the steering wheel towards you, moving it away, up, and down. Moving into the turn signal stick, down all the way is your left turn signal, right is your right signal. You'll have the automatic high beam button right there, and you'll see the green light pop up right here when the vehicle is running. And then you have your BC button. BC will cycle through the widgets of all the information that are right here. And then of course, if you pull forward, it'll be high beams, just like that button, or you push forward, it will do the high beams as well. Now coming on to the buttons on the actual steering wheel, at the back you have your paddle shifters, so a manual downshift, a manual upshift. If you pull this one down all the way and hold it, it will go, drop down to the lowest possible gear. On your steering wheel, you have your cruise control. So you need to press this button in the center here to activate your cruise control, and it will automatically set it. And then you can toggle up the speed by one, or if you click up all the way, you'll feel a second click, and they'll go up in increments of 10. You can either resume it, cancel it, set the new speed, or you can even limit the speed that you have. On some BMWs, you'll notice little lines that are right here. This is going to be for your active stop and go cruise control and the distance from the car you're following in front of you. Now, one button is gonna be your horn. Horn signals right here. You just press in on the airbag and your horn will activate. Down below is your heated steering wheel button. On the right side is all of your media. So volume up, volume down, next song, or next station, you can cycle through the playlist. So this will either be done on the head-up display or it will be on this menu right here. There we go, we got it on the head-up display. So you will cycle through either the stations or your playlist up there. And then down below, to activate a phone call, this is your media source. So if you press this, it will determine what source, whether radio, iPhone, or Spotify. And this is your BMW assistant button. So you click this and you will listen for a voice command. On the next side of the steering wheel is your 
wipers. So you can set your wiper position. One up is just auto and then you get into your manuals. I find with auto, this is your sensitivity on auto. So how fast the auto will wipe. It will also be sensitive to the rain that it's on the windshield as well. But this is basically like a more intermittent one. Uh, that you can choose and then at the side over here you have your rear wiper so you can turn your rear wiper on you can spray your wiper nozzle or you can just have it off and you have auto and then when the car is on the little light will come on here for auto now moving into the iDrive system it is a full touch screen so you can do everything through the touch screen coming down you have your four-way hazards button you have your vehicle safety shortcut so this will go into the intelligent safety on the vehicle by clicking this button, we get into the intelligent safety and then you can configure that. As we head down, we have all of our climate control buttons. So heated seats will always be in the same position. If your vehicle has optional ventilated seats, you'll see the little fan above the seat as well. You can only activate one at a time, either ventilated seats or heated seats, and you can select which one's going because you only need one per season. Then you have your max defrost. So clicking this will set all the temperature to defrost the front windshield. Then you have your rear defrost at the back windshield. You can manually select where the temperature airflow will be coming out. This digital screen will turn on as well. But this will just determine which vents, either the middle vents, your feet vents, or the defrost vents that it comes out of. Automatic will do an automatic regulation of your fan and your source depending on the heat temperature that you set the next one over is your heat temperature so the small lcd screen will come up here you can select what temperature you'd like and then you'd have your fans if the fans are turned all the way down the system is off then you can go into menu ac when you press it you get to go into menu ac and you can go into the climate control rules and precondition and ventilation then as you go over it now you just have everything for the passenger side at the very end you have a max ac button and the vehicle circulation so it chooses where it will take in the air if it's pulling in outside air if it's recirculating all the air on the inside and then max ac does exactly what it says just turns on the coldest temperature setting with the maximum fan and pushes in as much cold air as possible as we move down we now have our radio control buttons so mode you can select what mode whether it's the radio it's the phone um, band you can select the band as well and then your volume and if you want to turn the system off or on and then your one through eights can actually be saved to anything that you want so right now they are not assigned so you can have it set to your radio station you can have it set to a whole playlist you can have it set to a navigation point or just another menu that you like to have if you want to set the one through eights you just have to be on something that you want highlighted so let's say driver profiles if you click and press or let's say now it's on media menu if you click and press and hold the button it will then assign it to that one but i'm getting a, having a very hard time showing this as an example because the battery keeps dying so here we go media press and hold now whenever, whenever you click three it goes right into the media menu just like that then you have your next song or repeat or go to the last song coming down into our iDrive controller area where a lot of more buttons are. You have your transmission controller with the button on the side here. Press and back and you'll go into drive. Press forward for reverse. Press one forward will be neutral. And if you go to the left, you'll go into sport mode and then you can do manual shifting and press P at the end for park. Now the button up here is gonna be track control. You turn this once, it will be DTC, which is getting traction. You press and hold and it will completely turn traction control off. This button right here is your camera button. It is not the 360 camera button. It is actually just one of the cameras. So if you were in drive last and you press this button, it will go and it will show you the front camera or it'll show you the back camera. You will only have this button in your vehicle if you have the 360 parking assistant system. The next one is the parking assistant button. Whenever you click this, it will automatically bring up what is around your vehicle and what the exteriors are. Fortunately, my battery is dying, so it doesn't want to do it. But you press this button and the menu will show up of what's around your vehicle or the 360 parking view, depending on your camera options. It will show the proximity wave sensors. Now, on some vehicles, you will have the auto start stop button right here. On the X5, it has the 48 mile hybrid technology, so we do not have a option to turn off our engine start stop. Then we have our engine start stop to start and stop the vehicle. Sport mode, comfort mode, eco mode, you can click those at any time. And then you can also go through a few sub menus and adjust each one to how you like it. So there's sport and then there's sport individual. 
and you can customize individual to be certain settings if sport dampening steering engine everything like that and then there's adaptive mode adaptive will basically just adapt to your driving habit then you have your auto hold feature which is going to hold your brake pedal at a red light as soon as you tap on the gas pedal it will release you have your manual parking brake but your electronic parking brake but as soon as you go into drive and tap the gas pedal this will release anyway up here we have our iDrive controller so this is just going to control everything on that iDrive screen we can rotate the screen we can toggle left toggle right down for enter up and down and then we have short keys for media home map communication all the apps and navigation okay. at the bottom you have your back and you have your option and then you have your air ride suspension so if you have air ride suspension you will have this trigger and you can either lower your suspension or raise your suspension up depending on what you want to do there'll be another button right behind that this is to enter in enter up your sensor con center console and inside here you'll have one usb-c port now above everything, there'll be another one here. You push this in and you'll now have your cup holders. Now on X5s, X7s, there's heated cool cup holders right here that you can activate. Some cars will have a wireless charging tray in here, 12 volt converter and a USB port. The glove compartment can be opened up with that toggle right there. And there's another storage compartment on the left side of the steering wheel over here. On some vehicles, you will find three buttons here to program in for your universal garage door opener. Up here will be your light triggerings. There's, there's also sunshade buttons here on an X7. You won't find those in most other vehicles. You'll just find the light buttons and then your sunroof button. Push back to open the sunroof, push forward to close the sunroof or close the sunshade, push back to open the sunshade and then open the sunroof and press up to vent and press up again to close the vent. And then you have your SOS button. If you need roadside assistance, just toggle that down and click SOS and you'll go through to a call dispatcher. There's one toggle down by your pedals to open the hood. Just pull the lever twice. Then you have your seat positioning. So on an X5, you'll have these two extra toggles on here. X5s, X7s, X6s, 7 series compared to other models. If you want to go forward, press it forward, backwards, the backrest forward and backwards. And then these additional toggles will be the headrest going forward tilting forward and then if you press this toggle upward the whole headrest will raise up as well the bottom one will be the leg extension some of them will have a manual toggle right here for the leg extension and then if you want the seat to go up you press the whole seat upwards or downwards or you tilt the front area forward or backwards then you have your side bolsterings so this will tighten up these bolstering pads right here and this will be your lumbar sport. So your lumbar sport will either be in and out, up or down. Now we'll head into the back seat. So on the back seat, you also have your window control switch and your door opening lever. On the back of the travel and comfort seats on the X5, you have the USB-C port and a plug-in for some adapters. You also have that rear zone climate controls in all the vehicles. Some options will have rear heated seats. Most of them will just be the auto temperature and the temperature display and the max AC button. You have two USB-C ports here on an X7 with captain chairs. Most other cars will have the bench row here and you won't have the optional seat settings here. This is only available on the captain six seat options, but it's basically all the seat settings from any other normal seats. Now on the inside of the back seat on X5s, X3s and above, you'll have door lights right here where you can toggle on those lights. Okay, now I'm going to touch on a lot of them that are exclusive to the X7. So these buttons right here inside the door panel are for controlling the third row seats to lift them, toggle them up and toggle them down. Inside here, there's another flap for a USB-C port or a child safety strap seats. Come around to the back, you will always find a small button underneath the round out, except for on an X4. On an X4, your round out is how you get into the trunk area. On X5s and X7, you'll find another two extra buttons on this tailgate. Now, if it has air suspension, you'll have this additional button to lower the air suspension on the outside. If not, you will just have this one to drop the back. X7 also has a third control panel at the back here for all of the second and third row seats. You have maximum storage, maximum seats, or you just control each seat individually. All right, that's all of the buttons that are on the inside of a BMW iDrive 7. Hope you guys found this video useful best of luck at purchasing your bmw if you're in the toronto marketplace and you need one feel free to reach out to me email down below thank you guys so much for watching subscribe to the channel smash the like button i'll see you next time